Welcome back to Buckeye Talk. Steven Means, Nathan Baird. This is your Monday rewatch pod following Ohio State's 30 to 24 loss to Michigan. As of right now, Nathan, Ohio State season's over. Uh, there's a lot that would need to change that over this next upcoming weekend during championship weekend that would change that. But as of right now, where things stand, this Ohio State season ended on Saturday. And this this pod, this rewatch pod might get a little bit long because there's a lot to get into. We're going to talk Kyle McCord. We're going to talk Ryan Day. We're going to talk offense. We're going to talk a little defense. And, of course, as we do every week, we're going to talk special teams once again. But I, I, it's just – okay, let's start with Kyle McCord. I, I want to start there because – and I don't want to get too deep into the, like, the interception part of this because I think it's covered. He, he made a bad decision. He made a bad throw. It ended up in a touchdown. And, quite frankly, it's among the five reasons – why Ohio State lost this game. There's not necessarily it's, more, I think, in depth way we could look at that. No, it is a very it's like the one thing you didn't need to rewatch. Like it was that yeah. was, that didn't need a closer look. So yeah, it it kind of is what it is. So if you want to know what we think about it, uh we do YouTube videos where we grade Kyle McCord, we grade the court starting quarterback after every game, but also we talked about it on the on the post game pod as well. So it it's we we think what you what think it about it. Moving on. Yes, <laughs> but I want to talk about Kyle McCord's game, and I also want to talk about Kyle McCord's season, and I think J.J. McCarthy helps us do that, and Kyle McCord in this game, 18 of 30, 271 yards, two touchdowns, the two interceptions, he started the game off four for 10, and then he's 10 of his next 11, I believe, after that, like, it's, it's the same story. Every single game with Kyle McCord in these big games where slow start, he gets going, and then it's like, all right, well, is he going to be able to rip some throws at the end there that helps Ohio State win a game? And against Notre Dame, it was yes. Against Penn State, it was yes. And against Michigan, it was no. Well, it's not even just the big games. I think that was just a, it was a thing that was present all season long. I gave him a C- minus after the game. I actually stand by that grade because of what happened over the past three quarters, but he had to bring it up from an F like you have to give him an F for that first quarter. I mean, in the biggest mm -hmm. game in college football this year, four of 10 with a pick and a couple other really, really errant throws. And, and, you know, yeah, you threw some balls up to Marvin Harrison jr. And he made a play, but that it, it just wasn't. And I don't understand it really. I mean, I guess, I guess it does make sense. I guess I shouldn't say that. I guess it just does make sense that he is just a slow starter. That is as much of his personality after one full year as a starter, two different kinds of uses of that word. The, uh, after one full season, you would have to say this is part of his whatever, his Madden score, like mm -hmm. whatever, his ranking. Like it's 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 just part of his DNA. He has to change that. He has to be better at the start of games next season um, for Ohio State because he's going to have to be a better quarterback next year for Ohio State because his team around him doesn't project to be as dynamic at, in some in some important ways. So. I don't know how they fixed that because it was clearly an issue and even, and it seemed to be even when the running game was better with the exception of the Michigan state game, even when the running game was better, there would still be these clunks. And sometimes even if they would like go on a touchdown drive to start the game, then like the second drive is like three and out or like it just, the, the momentum was, it was really hard to build momentum. And sometimes it wasn't like just his fault. But there was such a disparity between how Common Cord would play from like mid to late second quarter and on. I'll have to go back and look at numbers. This is just anecdotally, but the the team numbers definitely showed that. Like we talked about ad nauseum. I did write an article that broke down like some of those team numbers just a couple weeks ago between the first and second halves. And you're the starting quarterback of the team. So it it reflects on your performance as well. So Kyle McCord this season, 229 of 348, that's 65.8% completion percentage, 3,170 yards and 24 touchdowns and six interceptions. The last time Ohio State's quarterback didn't have at least 30 touchdown passes was JT Barrett in 2016. Just to put in like, how far off the path he is. And the way you just talked about it, that's what I want to get into. And that's why I want to bring J.J. McCarthy into this conversation. Nathan, what do you think Kyle McCord's – what's the best thing about Kyle McCord as a quarterback? 
out and I mean as a football player, not like the mind, you know, calm stuff, but actually executing as a quarterback. What's the best thing he did? What's his almost let me set this up a little better. So Justin Fields had a thing where it was like he does this thing, it's weird, but yeah, but and his yeah, but was clearly his legs. CJ Stroud's yeah, but was like his mind and his his ball placement is crazy good. So even when he makes some mistakes, look how when he when it works and when it hits, look at how much it hits. When Justin Fields is on, look how much it's on. Even if some every so often you might get an Indiana game. I was watching JJ McCarthy both during the actual game on Saturday in the rewatch, and we've talked about this with JJ McCarthy time and time again. Do they trust him? Do they trust him to make the throws when it's time to make the throws? Do they trust him to not make mistakes? I went back and I listened to what Sean Moore had to say about J.J. McCarthy after the game because he got asked about some of the throws J.J. McCarthy was making in this game, and he said to him this, especially on the one throw he had to Roman Wilson where he threw it across his body, where, quite frankly, a better linebacker than Steel Chambers picks that off, but he fits it in there. Sean Moore is like, ridiculous throw. He'll tell you that he saw saw the guy that almost picked it, but he didn't. He just launched it in there. <laughs> it's JJ. I told him before the game, listen, listen here. When the game matters in some critical situations, I'm going to put the ball in your hands because I know you're going to make a great decision and you're going to help us win. You're going to find one of your dudes. And even on that second and sixth play in the fourth quarter, listen to a rewatch, uh, Gus Johnson's like, that's a dangerous pass. And Joel Klatt's like, I cannot believe he made that throw. And I'm thinking it. You're probably thinking it. Uh, Andrew's thinking it. Jimmy Watkins or Robert, we're all thinking, I can't believe he just did that. But that's his yeah, but. When it works, you get 30 to 24 and you beat Ohio State. I don't know what Kyle McCord's yeah, but is. And we've seen him for 13 games as Ohio State starting quarterback between the Akron game in 2021 and this season. And I think that's a problem. So it's the extraordinary trait that we were looking for, right? I mean, that that thing that, and I think you're right, that there were times when with Justin Fields and C.J. Stroud and and any number of other people, and you see it with J.J. McCarthy, where there's some sizzle there. And I don't know that Kyle McCord really sizzled a lot this year. I know he didn't. And that doesn't mean that it wasn't like steady, productive play. But the contrast that I saw on yesterday saturday and th- this is like again i think comic core did a lot of good things in the back half of this game like i don't think you can take that away like once he got past that first quarter like there was a point where it did lock in and and the extraordinary trait might be that thing that we've talked about the poise in the moment he, he i thought he showed that again i mean he's driving them down the field with a chance to win the game and if he doesn't get drilled on that last like who knows what happens if that throw gets off clean like we could be talking about this game in a very different way or, or if he chooses a different thing there because he has more time to make the decision, because we'll talk about that later, I suppose. But um, but J.J. McCarthy, so Ryan Day had many, many times said he doesn't need to do heroic things. He needs to manage the offense. He needs to run the plays that we've called and, and just make the right reads and just, you know, run the machine. Well, which of those quarterbacks actually felt like they were like running a machine most of the time like that's and that's not just on Colin McCord but the offense around J.J. McCarthy felt more like a machine for most of that game and then on top of that he has the sizzle he has once within the machinery he can do those things he can freelance a little bit Uh, I thought a massive play in this game was when he broke off for that um that long um, scramble past midfield, right? It was mm-hmm. uh, second and six on the TD drive that made it 24 to 17 late in the third quarter. And um, Kenyatta Jackson beat his guy off the edge, but Kenyatta Jackson is not fast enough to catch JJ McCarthy. Like JJ McCarthy mm-hmm. is uh, you know, one of the faster quarterbacks you're going to run into. And once contain was broken there, Ohio State was in trouble. And then on top of that, where another even mobile quarterback might have only gotten X number of yards. J.J. McCarthy is so creative and wiggly that he's able to cut it back inside and get like another 10 yards. Like it was, it was a huge play. It it flips the field. It puts him at midfield and and gives them a big boost on a huge touchdown drive that, that changed that game. So that element 
was, I think there were times this season where Kyle McCord flashed um, some special elements. I think he's got legitimate arm strength. I think there are times when he threw some great throws into to tough spots and, you know, having Marvin Harrison Jr. sometimes makes that easier. You know, you can trust a guy to make a tougher throw sometimes. We'll see if he trusts anyone like that next season when when this is going on with a probably very different cast of receivers. But and and the poise showed up in a big way, both in Notre, at Notre Dame, and I would still argue to some extent at the end of this game. But that wasn't enough. And I think we were probably you know, there was one of the questions, one of the kind of open questions this week was like, how special does Common Court have to play for Ohio State to win a game like this? And I think we all might have hedged a little too much on the side of him not having to be that special. And and also, I think we thought maybe Ohio State would be able to affect J.J. McCarthy more, and neither yeah. of those two things happened. Like, I, there wasn't enough. Common Court was put in tougher situations by Michigan than J.J. McCarthy was put in tough situations by Ohio State, I would argue. But I think that's a reflection on the quarterbacks more than it is on the defenses. And maybe I, maybe you don't agree with that, but that's the conclusion. Because I don't think that J.T. and Jack didn't make J.J. feel pressure at times. And even Michael, Michael got home one time. I, I thought they made him feel it. It's just he did things that made it not matter. And that's what is... Yeah. We've had this conversation for eight months now, going back to the summer when we were talking about, you know, does Ohio State's quarterback need to be Heisman Trophy level and all that stuff? Can they be, you know, 2021 Stetson Bennett? Is that enough? I don't think you were wrong. I don't think you were all the way right, though, because for most of the season, sure, he doesn't need to be special. But when it's time to be special, you got to be special. You got to be. You got to be well, when when okay. CJ, but I'm just like when Justin had to be special against Michigan in 2019, he was special. Even if they leaned heavily on JJ, JK Dobbins for most of that game, when it was time to do something special, he showed up. When CJ Stroud had to be special, especially in that Georgia game, even if it led to a loss, he was. I don't know outside of the. He steps up into the pocket and he launches one down the field to Marvin Harrison Jr., which was also a hell of a catch by Marvin Harrison Jr. But there were not enough of those moments from from Kyle McCord here where a defense did everything right. And Kyle McCord said, so. And I th you have to have that in this offense. You have to, when it's to your point about there's a machine around J.J. McCarthy that he gets to operate in. But because that machine operates so smoothly, he's in rhythm and he's ready for those moments when they maybe need him to do a little bit more. And maybe we can get into some of this with Ryan Day when we talk about the offense, but I have never felt like Kyle McCord has ever gotten into a rhythm as enough to where when it was time for him to maybe do a little bit more, he did it. And Joe Clyde even brought that up. Part of the reason why he was 10 of his next 11 was because they started doing the, they just started, you know, quick stuff in rhythm, one read, anything outside of that, it kind of fell short and you get four of 10 and he throws an interception. But when he gets to hit his first read, he's awesome. That's a scary place for this offense. Cause there's too many weapons for you to be that type of quarterback. So the one thing I'm going to push back on here is that, you know, Justin Fields is a first year starter has his back against the wall, has to make a drive at the end of the Fiesta Bowl and doesn't doesn't do it. Like, he throws an interception. C.J. Stroud, True. first year as a starter, has to make a drive at the end of the Oregon game, doesn't do it, throws an interception. And those were lesser interceptions in, or, or, or more more faulted interceptions in some ways than I would say the one that McCord threw um, at the end of the game. But but And also more to your point, I don't think, if, if Kyle McCord doesn't throw the touchdown that sets up the that sets up the touchdown. Those are the interception that sets up the touchdown. The one that we kind of glossed over before. Ohio State maybe still wins this game if everything else is still equal. And we're not sitting here talking about Common Core wasn't special enough. We're talking about Common Core didn't make the one mistake that cost him. And I think that that's it's a flip side of the same coin. That if you if you don't have that upper echelon thing yet or ever or whatever for for Common Core, then you have to eliminate all the other things. And J.J. McCarthy, as wild as he sometimes plays, and wild is an interesting 
term because I was I, I wrote a thing for the, the site on Sunday um, morning, uh, our usual observations. And um, the the loose, aggressive thing that Ryan Day was talking about going into last year's Georgia game that we thought was going to maybe apply to like all big games going forward and has not. And like those ter- those are the words he used. Like we're going to be loose and aggressive. What two words describe J.J. McCarthy more than like loose and aggressive? Like that's how he plays mm-hmm. quarterback, but for better or for worse. And for Michigan, for the past two years, it's mostly been for better. And there were, but at the same time, there were times last year where we all thought, having watched J.J. McCarthy multiple times, man, it's going to be like at some point he's going to, it's going to cost him. It's going to cost him. And I do think he gets to operate, especially this season, when you compare them this season. A second year JJ McCarthy starting within the within the well structured Michigan machine compared to Kyle McCord kind of trying to come along at the same time the offensive line is coming along, the same time the running game is coming along. It I, McCarthy, I think, at times had an easier job. But I, it doesn't mean that Kyle McCord doesn't have to be better. And the thing that he absolutely has to fix is why it does take so long for him to get into that rhythm. Um, why does it take so long on so many occasions this season for it to to click in? And it did for I mean, Ohio State went three uh, forced mission three and out on the first two series of the game too. But I thought Michigan made some good adjustments. They were for some reason they were uh, like only attacking wide with the pass and throwing like these weird screens, like that screen that they threw yeah. on third down on the first series. And it was, and Ohio State was doing a good job pursuing and keeping those things flattened out. And and not letting him get up to the sticks, but eventually they they found where they really wanted to attack with the tight ends, which is a thing we can talk about over the course of this. And I they got their quarterback into a rhythm, and I think there's maybe some of both here that Kyle McCord has some things he needs to work on to figure out how to get that going faster. And I think Ryan Day needs to examine what he's calling to get him there faster. Michigan definitely nurtures it better. They house whatever J.J. Because it does seem like for the first 11 weeks of the season, they almost like it's a short leash with what they're willing to put up with. But it seemed like they just leaned into it today. It's like, okay, let's get him some easy stuff just to see it, get him into a rhythm, because we know at some point he's going to do some J.J. stuff. And he needs to be in a rhythm so he's reading it the right way. And he, well, I don't know if he always read it the right way. He just, he played dangerous. And so they nurtured it well, the right way to prepare for when the dangerous stuff started happening. And I think it maximized those opportunities. So the best thing that McCarthy did all day with his arm was the touchdown pass to Roman Wilson, I think. And the controversial touchdown pass. Was it a touchdown? Was it not? And I thought the same thing after the rewatch was that um, what it was called on the field was going to stand it because it was too. So I don't even think we need to relitigate that. But yeah. you watch that play. Malik Harford's on the field. And we had we had kind of surmised that maybe they went after the freshman. I don't think they were going after the freshman. But I think the I don't think J.J. McCarthy cared who the safety was at that point. I think he saw a safety who was looking at him get distracted by Wilson uh. coming across turns his head and as soon as he turns his head that's when he rips that throw in between them that's yeah. like that is a second year starter quarterback play that Comacord maybe just isn't at yet because i don't know if he sees the same thing and makes the same read and drills the same throw in between two defenders the same way maybe he doesn't ever get there i don't know but i do think it's it there it's one of the ways where i thought the distinction between being in your first year with a guy being in your second year with a guy mattered this this game and that throw was why Jim Harbaugh did what he did last year with his quarterbacks. It wasn't just that whether J.J. McCarthy was more dynamic and better than Kay McNamara last year. It was because he knew he had him for this year as well and would make him a better quarterback for this year. But not that's not that's not a criticism of so, anything Ohio State's done, obviously, because <laughs> C.J. Stroud would no. you're not going to take him off the field just to make Comic Court better for this year. Obviously, it's just it just it, it's it's where they just we're passing as programs right now. So do you think Kyle McCord gets there? Because whether it's fair or not, this is the standard that Ohio state has set with its quarterbacks. 
that at some point during that first year, in the second half of it, the light comes on. That's the standard that they've set here. Whether it's uh, that whether it means they get to New York or not, the standard is at some point in the second half of this first year, the, the light's going to come on, and it's going to stay on. And I think the light flickered. I don't think it would ever was on for a s- extended period of time outside of the Michigan State game. But as we've said m- plenty of times, that's the game where the passing offense shouldn't just play bully ball because Michigan State has no answer for it, and they haven't had an answer for it the entire time Ryan Day's been here. So, are you confident that? It because it, it kind of has to turn on next year. Because to your point, Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't going to be the be on this roster next year. Mecca Buka might not be on this roster next year. Julian Fleming and Cade Stover might not be on this roster. It's going to be a brand new batch of weapons. And I'm very high on Jeremiah Smith and his future, but that doesn't mean he's going to look that way in the first four weeks of the season. And Carnell Tate, Marvin Harrison Jr. said it that he thinks that Carnell Tate is where he was last year. So he might be awesome and Brandon Ennis and Jelani Thurman, but that doesn't mean the first four weeks of the season, they're going to be ready to be that awesome. That's not, that's not a guarantee every single time. So like Kyle kind of has to be that. And I don't know how confident I am in that right now. So I'll throw some numbers at you. 64.6 completion percentage, 8.4 yards per attempt, 22 to five touchdown to interception ratio, and an efficiency rating 154.97. That was J.J. McCarthy last season. And Kyle McCord had better numbers Mm -hmm. than that in every one of those categories. 65.8% completions, so a little bit better. 9.1 yards per attempt, significantly better. 24 to 6, that's actually pretty much even. Um, And and although it felt, it goes back to what I was saying before, like I remember us getting to the end of the year and be like, J.J. McCarthy only has five interceptions. It feels like he throws one every week. Mm -hmm. And then... 161-64, 161-64, so seven points better there. So, and it, now, that also is to say J.J. McCarthy only jumps into, like, the 176 level on his quarterback rating. He isn't, like, at an elite level, like, what we're used to among Ohio State quarterbacks or or the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten as far as QB rating. The thing is, for McCord, though, he doesn't have the other wrinkle that McCarthy has. And I think that McCord... McCord's lack of mobility has been overstated at times because I think some of it goes back to how Ryan Day wants his quarterbacks to operate, Uh but he doesn't have whatever mobility he has. It is not the weapon that it is for JJ McCarthy or that it was for Justin Fields. Like there's guys who are on that next tier of how much they get to use it and how dangerous it is. So he has to be, better as a passer than someone like J.J. McCarthy Mm -hmm. is. That that makes sense, right? Like, he's got to be somewhere closer to C.J. Stroud as a passer because he's not closer Mm -hmm. to Justin Fields as a runner. I I think that's simplistic, but I think it's true. And again... That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because that's what the key was with those guys. Coming out of yesterday, coming out of that game on Saturday, if you just eliminate the big mistake, if you eliminate one throw... I think we're sitting here talking about, hey, remember how we said Kyle McCord just had to get in there and manage the offense and they would win the game? Yeah. And we might be talking about, oh, we were right. Man, Ohio State's gonna about to go 13-0, win the Big Ten, and maybe be the number one seed in the in the college football playoff thing. So that's still on McCord to not make that mistake that undercuts everything he did. But if you're telling you yourself that um, you know, from now to next August, you have to make do the film steady and the homework to where you don't make that throw and to make the other refinements that make you a better fundamental quarterback and take these other passing numbers up to a a level that where you are closer to that that prototypical Ohio State especially second year starter model i think that's attainable i don't think that Kyle McCord is stuck in this like um I don't think I don't see him like necessarily plateauing, but it, improvement is imperative. There, he has to take the next step. We it, when we looked at even C.J. Stroud coming out of that first year, we saw like so much positive things over the final two thirds of that season. But there still had to be improvement, right? And yeah. especially not knowing exactly what was happening with this team in, in some important aspects. And as we sit here right now. We would expect this defense next year to take a step back, not like maybe not even like a step back, but to 
probably regress from like challenging to be the number one defense in the country, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know what the backfield's going to be. We think the offensive line is probably going to have to maybe look for some outside help again, or 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 these four of the five that are returning have to really take things up a notch. Like there are just a lot of questions, and the quarterback play popping up a level, which you would assume is like just what should happen. Second year improvement, like the quarterback level popping up, helps sort of mitigate the the variance that you're going to have in all those other areas. I think the issue is that it can't just be one step because of all the reasons that we're listing that aren't going to be there next year. Like even with CJ's step, it was like, what you're also expecting the defense to be better because you're bringing in a new defensive coordinator. Some of these guys are getting a bit older. Like Kyle McCord might have to just make up for a very young football team. And I'm, that's where my, and I think that's where if you're a fan, that's where you're nervous about it. Sure. But but that's there's an there's an there's a point at which that's not on him anymore, right? There's a point at which, yeah. like you know what I mean? Like C.J. Stroud, mm-hmm. as good as he was, even that second year, Heisman finalist True. is for, I mean his first year, Heisman finalist his first year was not good enough to make up for the defensive problems that that team had, that's and true. the in the backfield inconsistencies that that team had at times, right? And in running game inconsistencies mm-hmm. and short yardage issues, like as great as he was in the second third of that year, and pushing his way to New York. He couldn't alone make up for that. So I don't know that Ohio State will fall back defensively to that level to where you're having to like fire the defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. I would be very surprised if it did, frankly, because I think they might actually retain some talent on out of this, some core guys out of this group. And they know that there's some younger guys coming. We can talk. That's for a different pot. But yeah, there is a point at which you are asking a lot for just the quarterback to be a savior of all your other issues. I point you to, I don't know, Caleb Williams, like how yeah. good, can a, like, and I, again, I don't think Ohio State's going to be as bad as USC was in so many important areas, but do you understand? Like, this is what it's just a broader point. I'm trying to make that common court has to be better, but no matter who the quarterback is, the, the same thing that we've said all along about the quarterback position, at Ohio state stands true that, you have to build something around him and support him too. It, that he has to do his part and be and, and execute and produce and lead and all those things. I'm not dismissing that all those things are important, but there's a there's a wall you hit at some point where somebody else has to boost you. Somebody else has to help you get over the top. And it can't. I don't think if you're putting this whole team on common cord, turning into a um, a like the one of the two or three best quarterbacks in college football next year, if that's the only way Ohio State can have the kind of season it wants to have, then that's not a reflection on Comic 